How's it going, YouTube? Hope you're having a great day. Just the man 36 here. We got Vegas. We're gonna be talking about some fall guys and different levels. Let's get into it because Vegas is ready to go. I'm going to rank each fall guys level one by one to create the most matter of fact, absolute, definitive, best, most accurate ranking of Fall Guys minigames known to man. These rankings are going to be judged off of their luck factor, how difficult they are, and how rage-inducing each level is. I'm excited to jump into this, but before we do, I want to remind you that I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash justtheman36. The link is in the description below. Come hang out, join the Cool Cat Gang. We play Fall Guys among other games. I'd love to see you there. Here we have our master list of all of the Fall Guys levels in our ranking system. We are going to be ranking best at S tier, worst all the way at F tier, and everything in between. Without any further ado, let's get in to the rankings. All right, which one should we start with? I'm thinking we go with Block Party. Now, Block Party, you're on a little platform and these blocks start swinging up around and their goal is to try and knock you off. You have to fit through the gaps, similar to that TV show, Hole in the Wall. I really like this game. I don't think it's very aggravating. I don't get very angry playing it. It's not very hard and it's highly repeatable, the strategies for success. Not much of a luck factor. We're starting off strong here and I'm gonna go ahead and give this game an A. This could change further down the line once we get some more names on this board, but Block Party is one of my all time favorite levels in Fall Guys. Next one on the list, Gate Crash. Now, Gate Crash is a pretty fun level as well. You want to traverse towards the finish line while passing through these gates that raise and lower on a certain time interval. This one is a lot of fun. I never get angry playing this one. It's pure enjoyment. It's semi-difficult and the, the luck factor is very, very low. I'm gonna give this one an A as well. We're starting off strong here. The third game on our list is DoorDash. It is hard to find a game that I despise more than DoorDash. This game sucks. You have to make it from beginning to end, crashing through these breakaway doors that have no indicators as to which one is going to be the breakaway door. Even when you find the door that you're supposed to go through, there's so many people trying to get through it at the same time. And there's this physics mechanic where you trip over the entryway to the door. It's completely, entirely luck. There's really no skill involved. This one is a solid F. The next mini game we have here is called Hexagon. Now this is our first final mini game, meaning you can only play it if you've qualified through all the rounds and you're on the final level going for the crown. The goal of this game is to be the last one to hit the bottom. You start all at the top, there's layers of hexagon tiles below you. Every time you step on one, it disappears. Last one standing wins. This level is slightly frustrating. Not the worst, definitely not on DoorDash level. The difficulty is quite high for those who don't get to play it too often. There's a learning curve to this one. There's also a bit of luck as the different players attempting to win at the same time as you could be doing something completely different each time you come across this level. For those reasons, I'm gonna put this at a solid C. This one has a, a bit too much luck and difficulty to be ranked much higher. Stepping on down the line, we're down to Slime Climb. Slime Climb is hard. There's so many different mechanics that you have to master to beat this level. The goal is to climb from the bottom to the top as the slime slowly rises. Basically, this means you are being timed. And if you mess up a level too many times, the slime will catch you and you will be out. There are several obstacles you have to pass to complete this, this level. There are almost every single time fewer people qualifying than can. If it tells you you can have 15 people qualify onto the next round, really only about 10 are gonna make it because the rest are dying. This game is a high difficulty and a relatively low luck. I find it entertaining. I think it's challenging enough it gets your adrenaline going. It provides a lot of entertainment value. I'm going to throw this one at a B. 
The sixth game on this list is Fruit Shoot. The goal is to get from the bottom to the top. You have to run up these treadmills that are slowing down your movement, dodging logs rolling down the center aisle while cannons are shooting fruit at you and bouncing around left and right, all while trying to stay ahead of the crowd and qualify in that top tier. Fruit Shoot is very fun. There's not too much luck involved. The difficulty level is not very high and the stress and the anger that I feel playing this game is quite low. It's a solid level, it's a lot of fun, it's highly entertaining. I'm going to rate Fruit Shoot in the A factor. Next on the list is Hit Parade. In this one, you weave your way across a couple narrow platforms. You have to dodge swinging wrecking ball type things, run up a slime path. You start at the bottom, your goal is to hit the finish line at the top. It is a very average game. It's one of those games where you play it and you kind of just forgot that you played it. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but there's nothing inherently good with it. For that reason, I'm gonna rank it a C. It deserves middle of the road. Pulling in the eighth position, here we have Hoarders. Hoarders is a soccer-esque game. Your goal is by the time expires to not have the least amount of soccer balls in your area of control. You do this by running around, knocking the balls into your zone and keeping them out of the other player's zones. We have our first team-based game. This adds an automatic increased level to the luck factor because you never know who you're gonna get paired with to play this game. I very much dislike the physics of the ball-based games in Fall Guys, so I get very angry at this game. I also think that the luck is so great having it being team-based. I don't like this one. It's not quite bottom tier. This one gets a very, very solid D. There are way better team-based games to play on Fall Guys. Hoopsie Daisy is another team-based game. However, this one requires far less skill than knocking the soccer balls around. The goal of this one is to be the team who jumps through the most hoops, gold hoops being worth more than white colored hoops. And that's pretty much it. You just run around jumping through hoops and whoever has the least amount of points by the time the clock expires is eliminated. This round does not take a whole lot of skill. There's some map awareness, so to say, of where the hoops spawn. I don't think there's too much to this one. I think it's a very average game. I'm gonna give it a C. Not much of an opinion on Hoopsie Daisy. Jinxed is a mini game that I have not played that many times. It's another team-based game where one player tries to infect all the opposing team before your team gets infected. This game is tough. It's very, very luck-based. There's a lot of relying on your teammates you have to do, and that automatically brings the luck up and the difficulty up as well. I don't like counting on my teammates in this game. They seem to break me more than they help me, so I'm going to give it a D. Jump Club is next to be evaluated. Now this game gives off extreme wipeout vibes for anyone who used to watch that show. This game has two arms spinning around a circular platform. One you have to jump over, the other you have to duck under. This game has almost zero luck involved. It is entirely skill-based. It's a lot of fun. It's a little bit more difficult than, let's say, Hit Parade. I really, really like this game. I'm going to give it a B, purely on the fact that it can get a little boring. And I have had it be the case where I get knocked over and I get spun around the circle and I still end up qualifying. I don't really think that should be the case. We'll give it a B. Before we get into the next mini game, I did make a mistake. I truly think that Block Party is actually an S tier mini game. It was so much fun. I always enjoy this one. I truly think that is the best one that we've reviewed so far. Jumping into the next mini game, this one is Jump Showdown. It's the first level that Fall Guys has released after the game came out. This is a finals level. You have to make it to the end to play it. And it's pretty much the same concept as Jump Club. The only difference being the platforms you stand on drop away, leaving you with fewer and fewer spaces to utilize when you're trying to jump over these bars. This game is a lot of fun. There is a tad bit more luck involved because I have seen someone die purely because he had no way of getting to a different platform after he had chosen one. The game pretty much screwed him over, but this one is so much fun. It is extremely intense 
while also being easy. I use this in comparison to Hexagon, which is another intense final level, but that one is extremely difficult. Jump Showdown deserves an S tier rating. Everyone gets involved, you're on the edge of your seat. Truly love this new mini game. Good job, Fall Guys. I'm having such incredible mixed feelings about this next level, Tiptoe. In this level, you run across this field of tiles with a certain path hidden from you. Some tiles will disappear as you step on them, others will reveal the path to victory. This game is so frustrating. There's an element of luck because you never know where the next tile is gonna be, but I get pushed off the edge so many times, it's not even funny. I've only ever qualified in this round twice. And for this reason, I cannot rank it very high, just for my personal spite towards it. This one gets a D. I'm sick of getting knocked off this level. There's too much luck. There's not much skill involved besides not getting knocked over. By the time the path is discovered, the qualification spots fill up in three seconds. This one gets a D. Brace yourselves, everybody, because here we have Fall Ball. This is one of my least favorite. It is a soccer style game. Reminds me of Rocket League but the physics involving the balls in this game, I don't understand. Sometimes I can jump up and hit the ball halfway across the field. Other times I hit the ball and I get knocked over and the ball ends up going the other way. I've won this game and done very well. I've also lost 13 to nothing. I don't like this game. I'm gonna give it a D because it's team-based. There's a huge element of luck. There's a huge element of skill and I rage very hard at this level. D is where fall ball belongs. No argument. This next mini game is called Perfect Match, and this one is a classic memory style game. The tiles you're standing on have a fruit represented on it, and they're revealed to you in a time frame. Once that time expires, the master boards show the fruit that you have to match to, and you have about three seconds to stand on the correct tile. The other tiles disappear, dropping anyone who is incorrect. There are three rounds with increasingly more fruit and increasingly less time to memorize the tiles. This game is very easy. You can follow the crowd at the end and almost guarantee yourself a victory. I enjoy it. I think it's the right amount of difficult. I think there's not much luck to it, not much skill. It's a good one, not a great one. We'll give it a B. Rock and Roll is another team-based mini game. Your aim is to push the ball down the ramp, up over a little ledge, and into the goal at the bottom. You have three teams racing to complete this task. Last one to qualify is eliminated. This game is pretty solid. I find joy in it. There's a couple strategies involved, sending a couple guys down to the end to try and block the other teams from rolling their ball. However, this increases the difficulty and luck factors involved in this level. There have been times that I've seen on the internet where one person is left pushing the ball and physically can't get it over the lip at the end, guaranteeing their defeat. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I like the race aspect to it. I like the little bit of sabotage involved. It's a good game. This one deserves a B ranking. We're coming down to the last few games here. We've got Rollout next. Rollout is a very fun level. You're on these spinning cylinders that spin in opposite directions with different obstacles, walls, pillars, gaps that you have to avoid while being one of the last few standing. I really enjoy this game. I think the intensity of the speed as things progress and people need to fall off, the luck factor is not very high. The skill level required isn't that great, but it's entirely skill based. And I don't really get angry at this game. And that contributes kind of greatly into its ranking. I have no problem rating this one a B. This is the 18th mini game on our list, Dizzy Heights. In this game, you have spinning platforms you have to cross, some balls you have to avoid with the intention of being one of the first few to cross that finish line. You're going to encounter it a lot. It is pretty much exclusively used in the first round of the game. I enjoy it. The skill required in this game is kind of a lot. It's not too much. You basically just have to understand the physics of a spinning block and timing your jumps, but it's a little bit more difficult than Hit Parade. So we're going to put this at a B 
I always am happy when I get this as the first round. We're brought back to another final level minigame. Royal Fumble is one of three tail-based minigames. In this one, there's one tail on the entire map and everyone is trying to collect it by grabbing the opponent. The last one standing with a tail wins the crown. I really enjoy this game. I don't think there's much luck involved and I don't find it very rage inducing, but the adrenaline you receive when you are tracking down the last guy with just a few seconds left and you're so close you can taste it or you're being chased and you're just trying to avoid everyone with just a few seconds left. This game is amazing. I love Royal Fumble. This one gets an A for sure. Now, Seesaws is a controversial game. So many people love it, so many people absolutely hate it. I personally kind of like it. I've done fairly well on Seesaws. There's a bit of a luck factor in the sense of if you fall off or you're in the back of the pack, by the time you get to the Seesaws, they can be facing directions you can't even possibly get onto them and you're stuck waiting there for the equilibrium to balance out. I find it fun. The difficulty and the luck will bring down its rating, but I'm still going to give it a B. It's a very solid level. I enjoy it. Here we have Team Tail Tag. This is the second tail-based minigame. In this game, you have four teams, red, blue, yellow, and green, competing to own the most tails. You run around trying to collect them for your team. Team with the least amount at the end of time is eliminated. Now, this is a team-based game. The luck factor increases greatly and my enjoyment factor decreases greatly. I think Team Tail Tag is the worst of the tail tags. This one deserves a D. It's so unpredictable with what your team provides you. I've had games that we're in the lead and until the very last second, everything just changes and we end up getting eliminated. You can't trust your teammates in Fall Guys. D for this one. Now this is just normal tail tag, no teams. There's a set number of tails, only a few people will make it past this level. This one is by far better than team tail tag. Everything is on you. If you pass, it's because of you. If you fail, it's because of you. Your team can't let you down because they are not existent in this level. I enjoy the tail-based games. I think it's fun to run around the map and try and grab one and then get chased in return. The luck is not nearly as heavy. The skill is pretty much the same. This one will go from a D up to a C. Everybody, the time has come for Egg Scramble. Egg Scramble is the single worst game that Fall Guys created. I hate this mini game with my entire being. For those of you who haven't played, this is Hungry Hungry Hippo style. The eggs are in the center. You gotta bring them back to your corner, throw them in your basket. Whoever has the least amount of eggs at the end of time loses. How? Ever. Once those eggs, that initial wave is grabbed, the goal of the game has switched and now it becomes pick on the weakest team. So if you are on that weakest team, you're going to have three quarters of the people in the lobby attempting to take eggs out of your basket and not even put them in theirs. They just want you to have zero. And then your team will be split. Some will be attempting to go get more eggs. Some will be defending your base, but it doesn't matter because it's a three to one ratio on who's attacking you and who's helping you. It is impossible to win if you are in last place at the very beginning. If there was a tier lower than F, we would give it to it. This one is the worst. We are making our way towards the bottom. We've got two games left. This next one is Whirly Gig. Whirly Gig is another qualifying match. You gotta be the first one or in the first group to make it to the end while dodging these spinning mechanisms. There's not much to it. I will say this one is tougher than Dizzy Heights. So we're gonna just give it a C. It's pretty basic. The luck factor isn't very high. The skill isn't very high. It's a very average level. So it'll get in a very average rank. All right, everybody, we have made it to the final mini game and we have saved a good one for last. This is Fall Mountain. Fall Mountain is a final level. You can only play it if you've qualified to the very end and it's quite simple. Get to the top of the mountain and grab the crown before anybody else does. In the meantime, you will have flippers to dodge, balls barreling towards you, spinning hammers to duck around, and you have to time your jump for the crown at the end. 
There is a bit of luck to it. It appears that you can randomly get hit by a ball that is barreling towards you that wasn't there not that long ago. And that is just luck based on which path you chose to reach the top. But this one is a classic. First one up the mountain grabs the crown. The adrenaline goes. I think it's very, very entertaining. We're gonna give this one an A to cap off our rankings. So there you have it. This is the definitive rankings of all of the Fall Guys levels. We rank them based off of how much luck is required to win the game, how much skill is required to win the game, and how angry these games make the player. I think this is a very solid list. Let me know down below what games you would change and why. This video took a lot of effort to film and create, so if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, leave a comment below, subscribe and turn the bell on, especially if you want more ranking videos like this one. That's it for me though. I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.